common portrait photography technique is to add a background light behind your subject. And that technique helps your subject stand out. It gives a more three-dimensional look. If you don't have a background light in your photo, we can create a background spotlight effect in On One Photo Raw 2024. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm best known for helping photographers get value from their post-processing and organizational tools. If you don't have On One Photo Raw 2024, you can save 20% using my coupon code BEAM20. I'll have a link in the description below for that. All right, let's go take a look at our demo. All right, so this is what I wanted to do is give you a little before and after look before we actually did it. So what you're seeing right now is the finished effect, but this is our original photo. If you look, she's very well lit. So is the background. There's not a lot of separation. There's a tiny, tiny bit of shadow behind her. But if we look at the after effect, then you can see she really stands out much more from the background. And that's kind of what we want to do. So let me reset this and then I'll show you how I built it. If you're paying attention to the before and after, you'll notice that I had a couple of layers. And what I need to do is separate her from the background that we're going to have. Now I'm going to come over here to duplicate this layer. I'm going to add a layer. So you can see that we've got two layers. The one over here, I've got copy one. I'm going to come up to masking and I'm going to choose people. So I've got her. And then I'm going to come down and apply that if I don't screw up too much. So, all right, there we go. And apply. Finicky little thing sometimes. And it'll go ahead and make the mask for it. And that's exactly what I want. You see, I've got my mask right here. I want to come down to this one. And I want to do something similar, but I'm going to also have to invert it a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. Since I've selected this layer, I'm going to come up to my mask and I'm going to choose this icon to make a copy of that. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go back to masking and I'm going to paste that. And then you see how that just cuts her out. So now I'm going to go to local. I'm going to do add adjustment. And by default, it always seems to kind of underexpose here, but you don't see it because we've got this little blackout here. So what I want to do is select that, go to masking, and again, I'm going to paste. Let's invert that. So now you can see I've got two masks here, and I'm inverting them. So now let's come over here to grab our mask. We're going to come up to this section. We're going to choose a gradient mask, and I want to choose center. So there's several types of gradients. We're going to choose center. We're going to click right on our nose. And you can see automatically how it's kind of dark in the background. I want to shape this now. Now we can use this handle to kind of turn this around in case you're not getting to these little dots. If you click on the dots, that will allow you to move the shape. If you click on the ring itself, you'll see the, how the double headed arrow comes out and that will allow you to move this. What I want to do is I want to make this outer ring expand just a bit further. And you can see how we can just kind of move that around. And that is how we got our look. So let's come back down here to our before and after. So that's where we were and that's where we are now. So it's not really that difficult. It was just a matter of how do you do it in on one? There were a few things that I tried in here that just really didn't work. But the idea of having these masks over here on my layers to kind of invert between each other worked out. And then on my adjustment layer, I just put in that spot where I wanted it to go. So really what I'm doing on the adjustment layer for the bottom layer is I'm making certain that I'm darkening the background. So the white area is what reveals and what's revealing is the exposure that I've dropped. Now we can take this too far. So if I move the exposure way over, you can really change that kind of background spotlight. I think this is really a matter of taste. What you can do is just move that around. And then if you don't like where the spotlight is or where it's going, you can just kind of vary it a little bit using these two different rings. So I want to bring this a little bit closer to her. And then we have a different look for the spotlight. But I think that this turns out to be much more dynamic than this. So look, there's nothing wrong with this photo. The photo is fine. It shows her just standing there. It's a, it's a good portrait. 
But having that background spotlight and having the change of exposure between the background and the subject really makes her pop out. Now that you've seen how to add a background spotlight using On One Photo Raw 2024, I hope you'll try it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you, and I'll see you again in the next video.